All right, it's always an opportunity for you guys to join me here at HNLC Studios here in the city of Plano, Texas. We're going to get into the word on this Axie evening here as we go into our, youth, uh, our BBC station, which really broadcasts out in the UK. You know, I'm usually up this time of the night because it's coming into the morning hours when most of the men of God in the UK are up, you know, doing their prayer services and asking God to give them direction, wisdom, and knowledge. So as what we need to do as men and women of God, <clears throat> And we know we got to go to our workplaces in the morning. We want to really uh, rise early enough to where we didn't, we don't see a lot of, you know, things that can distract us around. So we take advantage of the early morning hours. At least I do. I mean, this is what I do. And this is my purpose why I rise early and do the work. Or uh, it may have to do with some of the stations I have that run in different areas of the country, which is allows me to able to, um, deal with them coming into the morning part of the service and here with the evening part of the service. I want to get myself in position here. Those who are going to be joining us, you want to go to my, one of my Facebook channels or uh, my Our Heart Radio station or my Pod Bing station. As you go to the actually Pod Bing station. Matter of fact, go to my actually, um, oh, Facebook station. It's where we're going to advertise the link uh, for those who are coming in to our service on tonight. As we get ready to go into the Word of God over here in the book of Romans, chapter 12. Very interesting scripture. It's not a scripture you just read. It's giving you a lot of great information in terms of how, you know, um, how the Word of God tells us how to present ourselves as a holy person to a Christ. All that area he talks about in uh, 1 Corinthians, um, that particular 15th verse, uh, you know, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. Uh, about renewing your mind. Matter of fact, uh, First Corinthians, Second Corinthians, five seventeen. We we'll make sure we get that in order, and before we go out, because this particular scripture, it 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 really deals with an earnest call. When a man, one God said, he really loved the Lord. You know, he gives them instructions and in how they should comply to the order of uh, the service or the obedience in which he's calling them to walk in. That they may have all lawlessness, or walk with all lawlessness. Um, in the kingdom of God to be able to be under correction and understanding, you know, the work that Christ has put in them. It's very interesting how, you know, this particular Romans chapter 12 speaks about this particular subject. You know, sometimes when I say things, I put in an order where I try to get most people to understand, but I really want to throw curveballs, not to try to hurt you or hinder you, but to get you to understand that the word of God is more in depth than just reading just the basic scripture or some commentary breakdown, I give you some kind of knowledge of some man has given you according to their understanding. But it gives you the opportunity to ponder in the spirit and really hear what the word of God is speaking in these particular verses and scriptures as they go forth. And they kind of make their way out to showing you some things in your life as you go forth as doing the work of the kingdom of God. Once again, I'm going to go ahead and open up in prayer. We're going to start here. I want to keep my family in prayer, my sisters in prayer, uh, my sons, my daughters, your sisters, your sons, your daughters, your brothers. I'm going to keep everybody lifted up. There's a lot of things that's going on in the world today. Um, most of you heard about the mass shooting now in Maine. You know, I just don't know when you come out the house what your day is going to end like. This is why I always tell you about the model prayer. You know, you want to protect yourself by all means. Uh, through the spirit, you know, we can walk with the word of God in Psalms 91, that in the midst of these destructional things that take place around us, you know, the word of God tells us over there in the book of Psalms that we will see a thousand falling on the left, a thousand falling on the right. Matter of fact, Psalms 91, that's six and seven. But the, the harm of what's coming out in the world will not, it won't, it won't touch you, that God will keep you protected in the midst of the dangers. And just as we're seeing things that are going on today, we want to acknowledge the fact that we need Christ in our life more than ever before. I want to give a shout out also to my good friend, Dr. Albright, down there in Accra, Africa. And we hope to get ourselves down there real soon. Uh, most of the pandemic is uh, over with. You know, I'm one of the apostles. I do traveling. I do go to churches. I go places. But I got a home place I deal with also because uh, the kind of work I do don't require me to stay inside a building. So I'm constantly moving especially with the enormous amount of stations that we have here at HNLC Studios, which run 24 hours a day, you know, not me behind, being behind the mic all the time, but to my pre-recorded services and uh, 
some of the some of the systems we're using is um some i some what we call i you know ai operated you know they they kind of remote themselves and they come on times so we want them to come on with us even not having any kind of um hand touch or anything to deal with it but as i ponder over this particular station in this uh, particular scripture that we're going to get into i want to make sure we're going to look at this very carefully over in the area of the book of uh Romans chapter 12, and we're going to double the scripture up. We're going to look at also it in the, what we call the um, international version. And we'll look at that real close also as we get ourselves in position. Father God, we thank you. Lord, we always bless you and ask you to look over us and keep us safe. As we go through the process of his word, knowing that your word declares it won't come back void, but it's an accomplishing word. And we just thank you, Father God, every time we get a chance to step before your throne, not knowing which day will be our last, but trusting you through the process of keeping us in all our way, that we may continue to know and understand you have been our God, and beside you there is no other. We look to you as being the author and the finisher of our faith. And we just ask you, Father God, to guide the mouth of this priest. Make me your conduit on tonight or this morning in some places. As I begin to rattle off the scriptures and the words to your people, that they may have a clear understanding about the work you're doing with them, through them, and me also, as we continue to move forth and hear what the word of God has to say in this particular teaching here at HNLC Studios. Once again, for those who are actually going to be coming to our service, you can go to my actually Facebook channel, and it's under Apostle Charles E. Ellis, and there'll be a actually link there that you can click on. Or you can just go straight to podbean.com and you can pull it up and go to search bar and put in HNLC International. That'll bring you to live broadcasts that takes place here. It's multiple broadcasts we have, but these are some of the four that's going to be running tonight, as well as our, our heart radio station. Uh, some things on our Roku station will be running tonight, but usually when we run our day series, we got quite a bit of things running here in the States. Matter of fact, we're in 190 different countries, and we've got over 300 different stations that come out of this particular uh, program here at HNLC Studios. But certain um, services that we have, or platforms we have, reach certain areas. That's why we're always careful about giving you the proper information to where you should come to. We were going to go off our actually, uh, Spreaker broadcast tonight, which hits in multiple parts of the world. But well, we decided to stay with this one and hear what the word of God is speaking us, uh, speaking to us, comparing this, comparing this word that we're going to look at right here out of the book of Romans. Father God, we thank you. Lord, we bless you. We honor you for this moment. It's time to be in your presence. Lord, speak to our hearts, speak to our mouth, speak to our lips, speak to our exe, um tongues. Father God, that we may speak the words you need us to speak and what you want us to speak. That they'll bless your people. Let us not see you any credit, but all credit goes to you as you give us strength to push forth and do the work you're called us to do. Father God, it's always a blessing. Lord, we plead the blood on every word, and we just decree and declare, according to your kingdom, your purpose, and your power, that it can be no weapon formed against us that can prosper, and nothing shall be able to stand. Look at the word of God over in Romans chapter 12. I want to go to Romans chapter 12 here. I want to look at it in the uh, actually uh, amplified in the AMPC. I'm going to try to get up here in the AMPC in chapter 12 of the book of Romans chapter 12. Let's look at this very closely. When we look at this, the word of God says, uh, help, Lord, for principles and godly men or godly people are no more. I want you to really understand it because the Holy Spirit just it's, it just it hit me with something else. As I read this scripture, and I'm a, and we're gonna get our way through this, and I'm gonna tell you what this just spoke to me, and it didn't come across to me to just now. The Holy Spirit just dropped into my heart, and I'm gonna do a comparison with this particular scripture as we go into the area of the book of Psalms, chapter 12. And we're gonna go to Psalms, chapter 12. I want you to look at this closely first when the Word of God talks about, you know, some of the trials that we have to endure. That's being people and kingdom representatives. The word of God says, help, Lord, for principles and godly people are no more. Faithless and faithful vanish from among the sons of men. Let's kind of hold that right there for a minute. We're going to come back to that 12th chapter 
in the book of Romans chapter 12. But I want you to look at this word over here as I compare this this particular information that we're giving right here from the kingdom of God over in the book of um let me see here over in Psalms. Go to Psalms, man and woman of God. And I want you to go to when you go to Psalms, I want you to go to the uh twelfth chapter of the book of Psalms. And I want to show you something uh concerning the word we just read and um just kind of highlight some things that kind of just touched my heart when I just saw that because it was a familiar scripture and I was going through some trial times in my life and I was continuing to look to men to help me with a lot of things, you know, that the Holy Spirit has given me to help do the work that's coming from the kingdom. You know, a lot of us find ourselves running up behind people and we begin to seek them more than we seek God. And we spend more time on our knees praying and asking God for direction because he knows the plans and the thought according to Jeremiah 20 and 11 and he puts in us. But Matthew 6 and 6 makes a very strong connection about the way you should pray, how you enter into your closet, your secret place. And when you pray in secret, lift up your voice of songs and hymns, speaking in the spirit and talking to the father. He will give you an answer to the work he's put in you. The word of God tells us in Jeremiah 1 and 5, created, born, designed, engineered to be a prophet before the nation. I mean, he put the gift in you before you was born and he sanctified you to be what he wanted you to be to the work in which he instilled in you. When I go over this particular scripture, now we're going to go here to the book of Psalms. I want to get some in Psalms. Um, let me get out here. I'm doing some PowerPoint teaching as well because I got to have it in front of me because I want to get to the scripture very quickly and not being not just kind of shorten you guys out, but just making sure I get to the scriptures and hear what the word of God is speaking to me concerning this word over in Psalms chapter 12. Look at Psalms chapter 12 for a minute. We're going to go back to uh, Romans chapter 12 in a minute. The word of God considering in the AMPC version, when you look at the AMPC version, and you look at the word of God over there in uh, Psalms 12, the word of God says a very strong word in comparison with Romans chapter 12. This is why the word of God tells us we got to look to him who's the author and the finisher of our faith. A lot of men and women, God, don't know their gifting. They only pursue their gifting when someone tells them that this is what they think you should be or you ought to be or what you look like. Whether you're going out and asking God, what is the plan that you have for me? And he tells you in Jeremiah 29, 11, he only knows the thought and he only knows the plan. They asked for me in you. Now, he said it's a good plan, not of evil, but expected future. I mean, everything God gives you will not fail. It'll fail in the eyesight of men in terms of what they feel to try to control you to move in the areas they want you to move in. But you have to really seek God in the area in which he's called you based on the word of God. When we look at the book of Mark, uh, Matthew, chapter 6 and 33, how he says, I beseech you that went now, I beseech you that brought further. But he says, seek ye the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. But he does let us know that we are to seek the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. But he's actually calling us with a besetment in Romans chapter 12. But just reading over here in uh, Romans chapter 12 in the AMPC version, and you're coming back over here to the area of a scripture uh, in chapter 12 of the book of Psalms, he pretty much says the same thing in this particular scripture. And it says over here, he said, help, Lord, for godly man has ceased. Now, this is in the King James Version, comparison with the word that we just read coming out of the book of, of Romans, uh, chapter 12. But the first verse and how it compares with Romans chapter 12, and it's practically first verse. The word of God says, help, Lord, for godly men have ceased from among the faithful, from among the children of men. Listen to what he's saying here. They speak vanity with his neighbor and with flattering lips. We understand what that means. With flattering lips, double heart, they speak. The Lord will cut off all flattering lips and tongues that speak a proud thing, boasters. Look at me. Who have said our tongues are our own. We will prevail. Who shall prevail over us? It goes to the fifth verse. He said, for the oppression of the poor 
and the shining of the needy, I will arise, saith the Lord. Now, this is pretty much the word he speaks over there in the book of uh, the book of Luke. Uh, you think about the book of Luke, and he begins to uh, utter out the purpose and why he's here to do work. Because we go, just you know, stand with me. I want you to stay with me. I'm gonna lose you guys. But you look at the book of um, uh, Luke. You go to the book of Luke. And you just look at the Luke, uh, go to Luke chapter, uh, Luke chapter four. If you go to Luke chapter four, you're going to see what I'm talking about and how these scriptures are coming together. And as the Holy Spirit give us reverence and understanding about this, what we're teaching about all based on coming out of the book of Romans chapter 12. But in Luke chapter four, you go to Luke chapter four and you look at Luke chapter four in comparison to what we just read over in the book of Romans chapter 12, Amplified Edition, the first verse. Also in the book of Psalms, 12th chapter, first verse. He pretty much says the same thing about the, the office he's about to occupy and what he's come to do. In the middle of it, when he's going to fall into the anointing, not as the anointing is called upon him. It always was there, but now it becomes more in the area of an operation. A lot of times we hear people talking about how Jesus certain books say Jesus raising birds and all of these things and mesmerizing the priest in the temple. True, probably was that taking place. And some scriptures I read and some books I read talks about that. But the true activation of the power of the presence of his Holy Spirit came together when he spoke the word over in the area of the book of Luke chapter 4. In that 18th verse, he said, for the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has. Notice what he's saying. His, his reverence and his obedience comes from the one who designed him. Look at Zechariah, the time Mary was born. You look at um, Zechariah in the temple. We hear the word of God comes to his wife, Elizabeth. Elizabeth, ne- Elizabeth never learned into what it is to have a baby. We see we see the same thing. The angel goes over and gives Mary a Jesus Christ. We just see a whole powerful event of things taking place. And it runs all through the spirit. When Mary comes to Elizabeth and touches Elizabeth on her stomach, the baby leaps in her stomach. And I declare that the word of God said, we, they, I, believe the, I believe the Holy Ghost said to, to, to Paul, to uh, John, we meet in this water, but we're going to meet in another water. And it's going to be the water that's going to occupy you and send you into the operation in what you're doing. I'm just a forerunner, but the greater works that you may do, because the Father is going to anoint you to do that work. So when Jesus declares the word, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel in the book of Luke 4 and 18. And notice who the people he came to, to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted. You don't see a whole bunch of stuff dealing with a lot of uh, prosperity. You talk about prosperity unseen. That's the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit can fill you up with things you never known, seen, or heard before, that you may have the power to draw all men your way and teach them as then disciples to go out and spread the word. Jesus declared the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, delivering the captive, receives sight to the blind, and set liberty to those who are bruised. Now, when I look at the sight to the blind, there's things that you got to have a spiritual eye to see. And the word of God tells us to recover in the sight. There's a, a spiritual sight that you got to have in order to obtain your vision. As Hebrews talk about for the things that are seen or unseen, but we see as temporal. Now how the word of God decrees and declares that we got to have the patience and knowing based on Jeremiah 1 and 5 that is already instilled in us, but the operation has to come when we begin to confess, according to Romans chapter uh, 10, 8, 9, that he is the Savior and he's the one that's on the throne. So when we take our Bibles, go back over to Romans, to actually Psalms chapter 12, and we look at Psalms chapter 12 in the Amplified Edition, in the first part of that, notice what he says once again. Help, Lord, for the principles of godly man. He said the principles, and that's like the character. Men and women go around and they got a they got what you call a status quo to make them look as if there's some high priority part a part of the kingdom of God. But what's in them, as the word of God said, they got dead men bones. 
because they believe and declare they bick and scratch and fight among each other for for positions and titles. Go back to the word of God in the book of uh, uh, Corinthians 12. And now he heard through it, really had to separate Paul and Apollo to get them to understand that who they are. They're conduits. One plant, one water, but I'm the increaser. It says in Psalms 12, help Lord for principle and godly men uh, no more. Same thing in Psalms 12. The faithful, the faithfulness of the faithful has vanished from among men. And we come back over in the English version. Well, not the English version, but in the actually uh, common English, not the common English, but the King James version, man, the woman of God. And it says in the 12th chapter on that first verse, he said, help Lord for godly men that cease from among the faithful, from among the children of men. They speak vanity with everyone in his neighbor, with flattering lips, and with a double heart they speak. The Lord will cut off all flattering, understand that, the thing that Jeremiah talks about, these loose mouth priests and apostles, they go around speaking things and saying things. Anybody, these prophets, saying things that God never said. Ezekiel said, I never said that. I never told them that. So they speak things to bring more interest to themselves other than what the kingdom is drawing them to do here on earth. He says in the fourth verse, he said, we have our own tongue. We will prevail. These are people who want their own understanding and direction about where they proceed and see things are in their own eyesight. And that's a word for that over in the book of Proverbs 3 and 5, that you're not to lean to your own understanding, but you are to acknowledge God. That means man should always pray and not faint, men and women, and believe and trust in God for the vision he has given you to go forth with the work he's commanded in and over your life before you was born. Jeremiah 1 and 5. He goes over in that area in the scriptures and he pretty much sees the same thing over again in a way that he spoke the same words over in the area of the book of Luke chapter 4. But in the fifth verse, Jesus declared in Luke chapter 4, he began to come forth in the 18th verse. And he began to say in the later part, he said, sent me to heal the broken heart and the priest deliverance to the captain, recover the sight of the blind and set those in liberty who are abused. Now you go back over to the area of Psalms and you look over the book of Psalms. Notice what the second part, the lower part of that fifth verse says in the book of Psalms. For the oppression of the poor, for the shining of the needy, I will arise, said the Lord, and set him in safety that puffeth at him. Those who speak things against you, not knowing and understanding the direction and what the Holy Spirit leads you in, because they fall into what we call the follies of, 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 of Proverbs 3 and 5. They don't lean. They lean to their own understanding. And they begin to acknowledge the scriptures in the way they want to feel them to bring more what we call enthusiastic things to people. In other words, they want them to shout, feel paraded and, and uplifted. They got a form of godliness. But all they're doing is screaming about emotions because signs one of the miracles are not nowhere. He comes over in this particular area in the book of Psalms 12. He looks in that particular sixth verse and he says that the word of the Lord are pure words. Notice what he's saying here. The thing that Jesus said over in the area of Luke chapter 4 and that 18 verse deal with words that he was going to perform and we've seen it in his work. We've seen them heal the brokenhearted. We've seen them deal with the oppressor. We see the bland Barnum and Bailey situation, not just about the process of the spit and the clay, but open their eyes to new revelation of things they never known, seen or heard before. They gave them a clean cut vision of what the, what the kingdom is all about. It's not just the physical sight, but the spiritual sight. The word of God declares in that particular area of the seventh verse in Psalm chapter 12, he declares, Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, and I shall preserve them for generations to come. Now notice what he says when you start walking right with God. He said the wicked is always somebody out there to bamboozle you to make you feel the work you're doing or you're not capable or you don't got enough degrees or you hadn't been to school. Or you ain't got this. You ain't got that. They always find a way to keep you beneath their feet. But the word of God say away with you because I'm the altar and the finisher. I got the plan. According to Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the thoughts. So who are you going to look to? You gonna look to man or you gonna look to me when the word of God tells you to pray. 
and trust in the Lord and lean not to your own, but acknowledge him in all his ways. The direction will come. Come back over with me to the book of Romans chapter 12. And let's go back to Romans chapter 12 and make sure we get this particular area in place because I want to get out of here. I got some things I have to do. And I want to make sure that you're hearing this word as I take my, my, my Bible and I go over to the area of Romans chapter 12. Pretty much dealing with the same thing, but we're going to be in Romans 12. And we'll go with 12 and 12. And the word of God says the same thing pretty much here, but in a different and more formal way to get you to see that who you are in Christ. Uh, he's declared and decreed in and over your life that the power that he's given you is really more than what you can see. The word of God speaks over here in Psalm 12. He said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Look at what he says. Holy and acceptable that into a reasonable source. Now, this word right here, he deals with conform. This is a word that you understand that there's a way that you conform to the world system by being used to what it's in. And there's a godly conform, uh, a conformination that you need to be by and understand the rules and the regulations that come from him. And how he teaches you to walk upright with all that goodness and lawlessness he designed and engineered you as being a man or woman God, that you may draw people to you in a way that you need to draw them. Just look at the word conform. It's dealing with the area. It's like obey, observe, follow, you know, to keep, hold to, satisfy, as I say, meet or fulfill, you know, to adapt, to adjust. The way the kingdom of God has designed for you to be based on the word of God. Once you come into confession in Romans 10, 8, 9, that he says, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that God has raised his son from the dead. You shall be saved. So now we got a set of rules and understanding how we should walk according to the kingdom of God based on Psalms 1. I beseech you that for a brother by the mercies of God that you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. That of a reasonable service. Look what he says. Be not conformed. We just spoke about that. To this world. But be ye what? Transformed by the renewing of what? Your mind. Your mind has got to take on a new opposition. A new confirmation and com conformity. And it's got to be conformed to the things of the spirit. Remember what that word declares. Your mind has to come to an area of being what we call in obedience. It's got to be a mind of observancy, a mind to follow, a mind to keep things in position, a mind to hold fast to God's word, to be satisfied no matter what circumstance or situation you're in, to meet the needs, what he has in store for you, knowing that he declared, according to Jeremiah 20, 11, there's a plan and a thought he got for you, and it's a good plan. It's not of evil. That he got the plan for you. Now he comes back over the area and just looking at that, that Psalms 84 11, Psalms 84 11 tells us there's nothing he would hold from us. That's if we walk upright. So we conforming to the ways of God. If we obeying the word of God, we're observing the word of God. If we're following the word of God, somebody need to talk to me. If we keeping the word of God, holding fast to the words that he speak out of his mouth, based on Isaiah 55, 11, the word won't go void, satisfied in all situations or satisfied in all situations, meeting all needs and understanding to how we carry ourselves but make sure we're receiving the full benefits of what Christ has in store for us. This is what he tells you in Romans. This is what he tells you over in the area of Romans chapter 12. I beseech you that for brethren, by the mercies of God, that you put your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, that of a reasonable source, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. These things play a heavy role in your walk with Christ. Paul speaks about that process over in the book of Philippians chapter 2. He said, get your mind together. Let the mind be in you. It also be in Christ Jesus. Don't walk after the flesh, but have a spiritual walk that you may receive the ingravitational power of the illumination of the Holy Spirit. The word of God comes over here and he comes back over to the word of God in Romans chapter 12. And let's pay close attention to this word of God. He says once again in that second verse, he said, now I beseech you therefore, brethren, 
that you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. Look at this second verse. Be not conformed to this world. Notice what he's saying. You want to be alienated to the things of the world because it pulls you on a fleshly deed and desire. He said, but be ye transformed. Look here. That's that's that that's the second Corinthians five seventeen. Renewing of your mind that you may prove. It's how you walk upright. I'm proven to be that what I am as a kingdom representative. Prove what is good and acceptable in the perfect will of God. So here's Psalm 84, 11 coming right into evolution. There's no good thing that I will withhold, come on somebody, from those who walk upright. The word of God comes in that third verse where I say, through the grace, you're given grace. Doesn't matter what the circumstance or situation we're in. God's giving you grace, but you just trust in God. And understand about the confession of your sins and knowing the plan of God in your life is going to fulfill everything and every destiny he has in store for you. I say through the grace in the third verse he has given me to every man that is among you to not to think of him or herself. Listen to what he's saying. To be more highly than the author thing, but be sober minded. Sober mindedness comes when you obey the weary of the good of what we call the new covenant. That's in John 13, 34, and 35. Love them as I have loved you, and by this they may know that you are my disciple. How you carry yourself in the presence of people, how you carry yourself behind closed doors. you meeting the measures of being a kingdom representative, knowing that God puts that Psalm 84, 11 in your life, and he declares that he's a son and a shield. He's backing his word up. And there's no good thing that he would hold from you. That's if you walk upright. He says in the fifth verse, we got to get out of here. So we bring many are what? One body. Look what he says. So we're, so we're being many are one body in one Christ. Now we're talking about the unity of the Holy Spirit, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Even we did it, the limbs in which we have, the hands, the fingers, the arms, everything is attached. But we got one head. Anytime you see two things, something with the two heads is a freak. Get away from it. This is why the word of God talks about you shouldn't be double minded in your thinking and how you bring forth the word and how you tell people about the obedience to things that you do in the body of Christ. And if you can yourself out there doing something else, he says, so being many are one body in Christ and everyone, one member, one another. Look what he says. And everyone members one another. Notice how the word of God is bringing this to fruition. Members of one another. Now, when you look at this, it sounds ironic, but it's not. Because when you take the word of God, you go over here to the area of the Amplified Edition. And let's look over here for a minute. And the Holy Spirit is pushing me a little bit more, but we're going to give you a little bit more of what he wants. Now, he says in the fifth verse of the Amplified Version, to make that clear. So we being many are one body. Notice what he said, we being many are one body. I want you to really understand the part being many are one body. That we all as men and women of God should walk according to the kingdom of God. Not looking to thinking of ourselves as being better than anyone else like most people do. You know, you might as well tell the truth about it. Some people think they're a little bit better than you are because they maybe have a little clothes, a little building, a little more degrees. But you know, the word of God say, when you be not conformed to those things, you're being satisfied. You being what God wants you to be, not what men want you to be. So you don't have to play in the, you have to get into the proven point game. How big my house is, how big this, you know, this, that, and that. You have to get into the materialistic game, the monetary game. Cause it says once again in the amplified edition, in that fifth verse, so we being many are one body. That's one body now. You look at the Holy Spirit, it's like a, it's like a triangle. That the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit it makes that move in that direction. And if you take a triangle, you look at the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, all these back to the same thing. If you draw an arrow from the point of the triangle, whether you go left or right, it all comes back to the point as being the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. But when you put God in the middle, these are all three that represent the Trinity. You got the Father, you got the Son, you got the Holy Spirit. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, they're three. They're all in one. And so when the word of God declares that word, he says, so being many are one body in Christ, individual members, look here, of one another, having gift differ or differing according to the grace that he has given unto us. 
let us what look, look what it let us use them if let, let, let us use them excuse me if prophecy let us prophesy in portion we ain't got to go tell everybody something but god told me to tell you a lot of times we find ourselves using the words that God give us to try to obtain more knowledge or more higher positional status over another. Or minister, let us what? If we minister, let us in the ministering. Or who's teaching in teaching. Exaltation and exaltation. Giving liberty, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with what? Cheerfulness. This is what you got to have. You have a cheerfulness. You can't be all mean. Now, even though the word of God, Paul says, when I come to you with information, I don't come to you with enticing words. And But Paul didn't say anything to a point to downgrade anybody neither. But they may have got mad and upset. And that's one thing you can't worry about when people get up. If they wear their collar on their sleeve, they, their heart on their sleeve, then so be it. They just got to toughen up. Sometimes it's tough love in the kingdom of God. But you got to learn to move forward. Father God, we thank you. We bless you. We honor you. This time, this moment, as we go into our BB, we come away from our BBC station. That's going to be a power to your grace and your mercy. We continue to trust and believe and know that to you, Father God, that everything and all things are possible according to the kingdom of God. I want to thank God for my beautiful wife, Pastor Patty Ellis, has been on the line with her husband tonight. She's always there supporting me in the work I'm doing. Then I pray for my daughters, pray for my sons, pray for my nieces, my nephews, my whole family, and pray for your family. Best prayer requests you need, please don't hesitate to call up on us. We're going to hopefully on our Friday night, uh, what we call our countdown. Uh, we're going to try to get Pastor Patty Ellis. I believe she's geared up to, uh, to be on her Friday night service this Friday, uh, starting about 7 to 7.30. I believe it's going to be 7.30. And it's a 30-minute word that she brings. And it's going to be something very enlightening to help each and every one of you. Hey, don't forget to pray for me as I pray for you. Let's all continue to stay faithful. Let's continue to stay in a positive mode about things and just pray for those who are out there in that area over there in um, that little uh, main country town over there that had that shooting that's going on. Let's keep those people.